and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Demir Reanimator, our first deck of the day. Uh, we got some fun decks lined up for today after our 12-hour stream, both Demir Reanimator and Boros Aggro, two decks I like a lot that I've been wanting to get back to. And then I have two viewer submitted decks in the middle that you can see here. It's a green-white Arcbow Knights and a mono blue devotion that I'm going to try out both of those. But first, we got Demir Reanimator. We're going to be playing this deck over in ranked today because um, we played it the last time we played it. You know, we just played a league with it, and it just felt pretty strong. I liked I liked how the deck felt, and so I want to try it out in ranked. Um, you know, I think it could be good enough. Um, you know, basically what we're trying to do is put Agent of Treachery or Dracuseth, one of those, into our graveyard and then use uh, Concoct and Bond Revival and Blood for Bones to bring it back from our graveyard uh, into play. And um, then we also have like Thassa that gets to Flicker, Agent of Treachery, and we basically just try to steal all of our opponent's stuff and then try to figure out how to win the game after that. Uh, we use Tomebound Ledge to uh, loot. We have Thirst for Meaning, uh, which is a pretty nice addition. Be able to draw three, then discard two, unless we discard a Thassa. We have Mire Triton, which is a good defense and gain some life um, and also can put some cards in the graveyard. So, yeah, we got a bunch of good stuff here. Um, Dracuseth, you know, obviously works the best with Bond or Revival, um, but uh, Agent of Treachery really works with any of them, including Blood for Bones, and Agent of Treachery is a pretty sweet combo. Yeah, I liked I liked this deck, and then and then post board if they if they have stuff that like also Age of Treachery at seven mana like it's not hard just to like if they're you know a slow deck like you just start hard casting Age of Treacheries after a little bit like that's you know the games definitely go long like we're not a fast deck here so like we def definitely just hard cast Age of Treacheries also um, if they if they're like really attacking our graveyard and everything like that after sideboard we have uh, we can we can kind of pivot we can bring in Thief of Sanity and Ashiok, and have a couple other um, good sideboard threats like that. So let's give it a try. Demir Reanimator. So let's play some ranked. Let's see, traditional, standard, ranked. Demir Reanimator. Okay. Yeah, because, like, so we just have, like, we're really focused on Agent and Treachery, like, where we can cast Agent and Treachery and everything. Of course, we cannot cast, like, all of our mana is blue-black. We cannot actually cast a Dracuseth unless we would steal three lands from the opponent. But, so, like, we're not we're not really focused on on reanimating Dracuseth. We want to be pretty consistent anyway, you know, like, even if we have, like, the card in hand. We don't want to just have complete dead cards in hand too much. Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's a good. I want. I want untapped land right now because I don't want to be shocking all the time. That's a good thing for Meyer Triton to block. Maybe that card is strong. So, um. So yeah, so we got the game up. So how does is cardboard live working for y'all here? And if so, how does it look? I get discovery dispersal. It's not working. Okay. Um, so let's see what I need to do about that. Go back, check the email they sent, see if there's any 
anything I'm missing. So obviously, them drawing the Embercleave is kind of rough. I wanted them just to play that other Knight of the Ebon Legion this turn. I don't have anything I can get, do I? I don't have any two mana removal, which is what I would need to find with Thirst for Meaning. I mean, I could, I can pay two life and put a Mire Triton back into play, but then I, so I just pay two to gain two, so I just stay at six and Knight you know, with the activate ability does a whole lot more than six damage. That Ember Cleave got me. All right, so let me see if I can figure this out. As far as I know, everything's set up correctly. All right, we can bring in more removal. Um, I'm gonna take out a Thassa, take out a Skull. I'm gonna take out both Thassas. And... Maybe I don't need the E2 Extinction. Yeah, we don't need that. Oh, I could just take out Thought Erasures. Let's do that. I'm going to take out a couple Thought Erasures. Okay. So as far I'm keeping concoct <clears throat> because of concoct's uh, surveil three ability. As far as I can tell, it's all set up. We got over here double Phoenix of Ash, Spawn of Mayhem, and a Rotting Regisaur. I'm gonna take the Spawn. Where I have E2 Extinction can exile one Phoenix. I guess they don't even have double black for Spawn, but oh well. Huh. As far as I can tell, everything's set up. So yeah, each extinction can, can exile one. I can also connive and and gain control of one also. great trade for us. Oh, you're right. I got discard two. Um... Ahem. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Basically hoping... Hoping there's no... No Ember Cleave. Good. Love, love these trades. They get to cast my discovery. But, you know, they basically just threw away the robber of the rich for the, the discovery. Thank, thank you so much there, Morgan. I wonder if it's... They're still just not playing Phoenix ever. I wonder if the Cardboard Live's, like, looking at the wrong screen, maybe. Maybe that's what it... Maybe that's the problem. You know, the two screens. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, so wait, the cardboard live overlay is working for you, Trog? It works? Okay. Okay, so maybe, yeah, maybe it takes a little bit of time to load. Yay. It works on mobile too? Wow, that's awesome. So does everything look good, like Stream Decker and Cardboard Live and everything now? Yo, keep me updated whenever we go to the next game. pull up my stream and look at it for a second. See how it looks. Keep. How long does it take for me to keep on the video? There, I just kept. Okay. Ooh, it has the player deck list also. Kind of want to lower that player deck list a little bit. That's covering up the other stuff. Changes and face the strange changes. Try that. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm live. Life changing settings and stuff. 
Phoenix Eat Rider. I have one card in the graveyard right now. Yeah, I, I skipped over the reanimate spell because I don't have anything to reanimate, and this is this is the kind of matchup that's, you know, a fast matchup where I need either um, things to reanimate or interaction. A lot of both. Perfect. All right, that looks good. <clears throat> Just all, all online, Genesis. Um, so I want to cast Ritual of Soot next turn. I want to just play the Fable Passage and just get a land out of my deck. Playing the Mire Triton first doesn't make the most sense if I'm just going to be sweeping the battlefield the next turn, especially how Mire Triton doesn't... can't block because this thing has Menace. Yeah, I guess I could probably turn off the, the deck list thing or I'm not yeah, I'm not sure exactly with that honestly. Yeah, the one the one you just sent me yesterday, Borderland Ranger. Um, it's up there. This Ember Cleave card seems pretty good. I'm not sure sure if y'all have seen this one before. I do not have control of the Ember Cleave. They can re equip Ember Cleave to something else. Like that. Another Agent Treachery. Agent. Darn. How much do I attack with? I guess I can't just attack with everything. <laughs> Registrar shouldn't be allowed to hold a sword in those tiny hands. Ouch. That's lethal. Ember Cleave got me both games. Both games I felt pretty good about winning. I thought I was going to be winning them, to be honest. 
but Ember Cleave just kind of stole him. So yeah, like all all three of those games, I thought I was going to be winning, but two of them, two of them had an Ember Cleave stealing it. Yeah, if I could have stolen Ember Cleave, but then they still they would have attacked with Ember Cleave the next turn because you know Ember Cleave doesn't get unequipped. So yeah, if I would have stolen Ember Cleave, I would have basically I, I still I would have been dead if I would have stolen Ember Cleave because then they still attack for like it's still their turn and then they get to attack with that Phoenix with the Ember Cleave on it. They could just pump the Phoenix and they would have just killed me. So taking the Ember Cleave while you are allowed to do that would would have resulted in me taking lethal damage the next turn even you know the the turn before so that would have been a the incorrect decision yes there's no unequip just if i had the mana if i could take it and then i had the mana to re-equip it to something else or if i had like a fervent champion you know that costs zero to equip you know anything like that but so it would not have worked Why are all these cards so good? Taking either Reaper or Golgari Queen. <laughs> Guess I take Reaper. Alright, Concoct is a reanimation spell. That could possibly mill over something. Then also they have Mayhem Devil. That's just going to kill it very easily. I'm going to try to you know, draw something that would let me like discard this Dracuseth or something like that. Yeah, of course, Kalua King. Yeah. I mean, I never say that I'm not going to play anything again. But yeah, so yeah, Clackbridge Troll. Yeah, I like, I mean, I like Clackbridge Troll. I could definitely use some more uh, Clackbridge Troll. <sighs> hmm. All right, so the safe play is taking a turn off, casting the Thirst for Meaning, draw three, you know, Maybe find Agent of Treachery, but then definitely find Dracuseth and put it in the graveyard. That's the safe play. And then next turn, reanimate Dracuseth. The not safe play, but super high upside, is concoct and see if we have an Agent of Treachery in the top three. Because then I'd be able to bring back Agent and Flicker Agent like right now. Um, so what do I want to do? If I play it safe, I'm like I'm taking six, and even more. Let's go with this. I think we got it. I think there's an Agent here in the top three. Wow. So good. All right, we can put one over there. I guess, we, should we just draw the other? No.
Yeah, if I if I target one of the creatures first and they sack it to the witch's oven. I'm going with You're taking the devil means I take less damage. I'm getting this this call from this number that I didn't answer and now it's calling right back. I guess I should answer it. Just a second. So sorry, it's it's a phone call about uh, the moving company that I have set up for for next week. That's what the phone call was. So I'm on currently on hold. Yeah, um, and they, they're just basically ver verifying all the, the details, the date, you know, number movers, all that kind of stuff. Um, no, <clears throat> no, no changes to the deck list except, like, from the last time we played it, the, the end of the video. Um, like, the, the deck list that we were talking about at the end of the video, that's... That's the list that he's using.
All right. <clears throat> no. More discard. So they took the Thassa, so I don't get to keep flickering the Agent of Treachery. All right, so my, my opponent knows about the Cry of the Carnarium, but they didn't sacrifice. So, like, if you're playing against Cry of the Carnarium, you have to sacrifice on your turn and make sure the Cauldron Familiar is in your graveyard on your turn. They just left it all out on the battlefield, which is exactly what I wanted. But I didn't expect them to do that after uh, seeing the Cry of the Carnarium because it's... So now the Cauldron Familiar is exiled, even though they use the, the Witch's Oven because it says... Um, Exile all creatures, cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So, like, it was put into the graveyard from the battlefield that turn, so now it's exiled. So I think I I think I should take... So we get Agent of Treachery, we get to steal one thing. I think I should probably take Castle Lock Twain. Yeah, like I, I was gonna take the castle Lock Twain, or Lock Lock Twain. There we go. That's how it's pronounced. I've been pronouncing it wrong. Uh, got a YouTube comment about that, and so uh, I'm gonna try to pronounce that correctly moving forward. So Castle Lock Twain. No, I don't. <clears throat> I, don't, I, I think that the, this deck's better like this than than with red with cycling effects because uh, I don't think the cycling effects are very powerful. This this deck basically gets to play as... Gosh, I really like all these cards. I guess I could put back a land and dig for more land, I guess. With Discovery, Tonebound Lich. I think this... Uh, that card's good too, but that's not a land. I think the deck plays pretty well as is because you could just get to play like a normal like Demir control slash mid-range kind of deck and that you just have the Agent of Treacheries also. Hey, there you go. Awesome, Matthew. Where's our lands? All right, Temples of Land. A bit. So basically, I would draw, I would cast this, I would draw three, I would discard like an agent and a Tonebound Lynch. I think that sounds fine, actually. Basically, turning. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good trade. Get the next three cards. Yeah, Team of Reclamation, of course, is a, is basically a combo deck. Uh, and this may not... You know, they don't usually have, like, the best targets for Agent Treachery. Wow, no land? <clears throat> Certainly wanted a, a fourth land. So that's it's not good at getting behind on lands now. No, I don't I don't know that feature, Matthew. I don't I don't know that feature. Are you talking something on on your end, on my end? Where are these lands? This is crazy. Okay, I gotcha. Wow, 
this has been pretty crazy. How many cards we've gone through, how little lands we've had. Finally, got up to five lands. And hopefully this card is not another counter spell. And I get to age in a treachery and steal the reclamation. But also, you know, like they're, they are, of course, a Brazen Borrower deck. I guess I have to steal Hydra Graces. Does make... Let's just do this, actually. Brazen Borrower deck does make my life more difficult. For sure. <clears throat> All right, let's... Try to actually hit land drops. So we're gonna have negates. Um, hmm. I don't have any more discard or any more counter magic. Maybe I need more discard and counter magic in my sideboard. That is possible. Yeah, Brazen Borrower is just really tough for just so many reasons. You know, mostly like, you know, we try to steal their thing, they just bounce, put it back in their hands. So it makes it how, it makes it where basically stealing lands is like the thing that we want to do. I want to keep a Ritual of Soot. Nah. Yeah, we just missed too many land drops and we're just too too far behind. And they had a... You know, they needed a Counterspell or a Brazen Borrower. And they had one. They needed one of those two things. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool there, Matthew. Yeah, so you can you can play arena and still have me on your screen also. Watching the stream, that's cool. Lands. Hooray. Hey, crazy support. Happy Tuesday. Yeah. 
Ambusher, de Ambusher definitely makes my life difficult. That's for sure. But yeah, it looks like they're gonna get this. That's good hand, you know, turn two, turn two, grow spiral, turn three, ambusher, and then now you have counter spells. Good hand. That was a great hand. Yeah, that's... That could be our worst matchup. That could be... We talked about Brazen... You know, just a bunch of counter spells. Um, Brazen Borrower, the bounce and stuff. Not even very good Agent of Treachery targets. Combo kill you. That's just really tough. Uh, the last song that was Saint Motel, My Type. So I think we have learned Ember Cleave is a difficult one to beat. So I'm taking that card. How are we struggling so much with these lands? This is crazy. There's 25 land in the deck, and we have so much card selection. You're like, we just went through six cards, and not a single one of them were lands. Yeah, we had the Temple Scry. Went through seven cards. We scryed at the Temple. We surveilled with the Thought Erasure. And we drew two cards. And then we also <laughs> surveilled over two other cards. And then Andrew another one. Just went through seven cards. Eight cards now. Not a single land in 25 lands. Definitely taking those out. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Like that just shouldn't shouldn't happen. Yeah. 
So we have set up for turn at five, attacking with Dracuseth. As long as... There we go. I was going to say, as long as we get the fifth land. Love to draw another thing that costs two mana that we get to double spell. But you don't don't always get what you love. The next card was Thought Erasure. That would have been perfect. Put the two damage on the Steamkin. All right, Dracu Sith gets us there. And here we go. Hey, Nox Girl. Have a good day. Just finished eating my lunch. Gonna watch the stream for a bit. Awesome. Well, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Yesterday, a hand that had zero lands and Z Mulligan, and it was seven lands. <laughs> Good old magic. <clears throat> this is a good curve. Meyer Triton into Cry the Carnarium. Casting Discovery, because I think that my opponent has Stomp. Yeah, I thought that they had Stomp with Bone Crusher Giant, and so not really letting them uh, get a good Stomp. I'll take that one for one. Get that thing exiled. Wow. Frenzy's pretty awesome, though. Of course, we can still cast Bone Crusher Giants. to cast the Eat of Extinction at targeting the Phoenix, most likely. It was just kind of seeing what else we'd have. We've got a couple of spitters to take out the Mire Tritons. Let 
Looks like they have a Rimrock Knight. That's my guess. Graveyard. I do not want that one in my hand. Because I think I'd like to bring that back from the graveyard to play with haste. Because that's fair. Good fair magic over here. I think Draki Seth Maw Flame should cost five mana and have haste. Yep. GG's. The mono black discard deck. Um Easiest Let's see. Easiest way is probably on the YouTube channel. And I can search my YouTube channel for mono black discard. Looks like I haven't haven't played it in a little while. But that's the list right there. At least the last list that I see. All right, Cricket. Hello. I want to keep the Agent of Treachery. I have to just... Now I have to just draw any, like, draw discard spell. If we got a good amount of those. So it's either a draw discard spell or a land. I would keep either of those. Other stuff I'm going to discard. Hey, awesome. Thank you, Rex. Happy anniversary. Looks like I have not updated the sub goal, have I? It is that's sub number two today. Take the agent treachery. Do it. Agent. 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 Darn. Treacherous Blessing's awesome. Come on, land. Or Mire Triton. Tilt. Mill over those lands I want to draw. So of course my opponent is playing uh, Esper Doom Foretold. If they play a Doom Foretold, we just get to let the Doom Foretold pop and then we have to discard a card, which is actually exactly what we want. I am not making this up as I go. Leave with I would lead with concoct, not bond revival, because I want I want to say bond revival for Draki Seth for the haste for that card.
So they still wanted to keep up four mana, so they didn't want to just Oath of Kaya. Do they have... I guess they have two Thought Erasers. It's pretty rude. This is to do combat damage to a player to be draw then discard. So we're not going to attack Teferi. We're going to attack them. So they've, you know, had three Thought Erasure, so they've discarded three reanimate effects. I did scry one down to the bottom earlier as well. But if we draw a land, we can cast Scholar and put two of them back into my hands. Keep that seventh land for the scholar. I don't really mind that they get to gain two life. I lose two life. It's fine. But in case of... So I'm keeping the seventh land to be able to play Scholar of the Ages, but in case of Doom Foretold, it would make me discard. Then we'll just discard the land so we don't just get rid of the Scholar. Seemed unnecessary. They're at a healthy life total. I just wasted their Teferi. Don't get to draw a card off the Teferi either. Yeah, we could probably have another Lock, uh, Lock Thwain in here. Yeah, Scholar of the Ages. Yeah, it's not only Thassa, but then yeah, it's also just a it's another reanimate target because you know, like we don't have an abundance of reanimate targets, so it's it's another one. But then, yeah, Thassa, Blood for Bones. Those work pretty well. With Scholar. Um, I don't have, yeah, I'm going to keep discovery there. It's better for me to take Oath of Kaya or Doom Foretold. So let's see, I take Doom Foretold, they sacrifice something. Goes back to me, I just sacrificed the Doom Foretold. Uh, 
I don't think I take a land. I have another agent in my graveyard. I can keep on taking agents. Or I can keep on bringing back agents. That's not really a problem. But I, I am worried about dying. Like, you know, my opponent has two 4-4s four here. Like, if I don't... I, th I don't think I can really take a, a one of the castles. Because, I don't know, like, these 4-4s four are kind of scary. And then I have to, like, sack permanence. I'm sacking permanence. The blood for bones is just never going to do anything. So I do have another agent in here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Agent of Treachery against... I mean, that's a good card. Yeah, I guess we have, to, we have to keep this. I wish I could cast it this turn. We're going to have to cast it next turn. Yeah, I could make the eight, the treacherous blessing go away. But they can just bring back treacherous blessing. Also. No, they don't have Command the Dread Horde. They have Dance of the Mance. So one thing, one thing that I haven't been like super happy about in the sideboard is the Thief of Sanity. You know, I'm still kind of trying it out, but I haven't been very like as impressed with it. But um. I think I may want to replace the Thief of Sanity with Ashiok, with three mana Ashiok. Three mana Ashiok would be awesome in a matchup like this. Um, as is, I don't think I really have enough for this kind of matchup, honestly. I wonder if I need to play a Ritual of Set to be able to destroy like the four fours that come back. Yeah. Thief Thief has not been impressive. I I was definitely expecting more from Thief than what than what uh than what Thief has been providing. So 
So I, th I think I want like three mana Ash here. But yeah, more more counter magic and discard could also be useful. But I, I think I think three mana Ash would be a good card to have in the sideboard, honestly. That was something that I was still, you know, still trying out. Um, Hazel Farmer. Because, <laughs> like, like, these are the kind of matchups that I want. Like, the sideboard slot that Thief is, these are the kind of matchups that I want. But if you think about three mana to Fairy and Oath of Kaya, like Thief of Sanity matches up so poorly against those cards. Um,. That this isn't. I don't think it's the best sideboard choice for me because of that. Yeah, there's there's no like queue for the donation deck. All you have, um, there's info about it down below, but all you have to do is just donate there. It's just twenty dollars. You just let me know. Just send a, a link to the deck list and let me know when you want me to play it. You know what day, what what day, what time slot do you want me to play it? That's all you got to do. I only have I have two donation decks. One on one for Wednesday, one for Thursday right now. I'm known for my excellent timing. Yeah, this is a very poor. Interaction for us. So yeah, I need uh, uh, three mana, three mana Ashiok for that slot. That's more like it. Hopefully they don't have another card to get rid of Ashiok. This might be a bad idea. No, they're not boarding out Oath of, Oath of Kaya. Nope. Do you want me to phase you out of time? I don't really care what you do, man. Yeah, like we're just not beating this hand. I hadn't I hadn't gotten a chance to get around to that yet, sandbox. You know, the the twelve hour stream yesterday. I didn't have a lot of time today, but I and I had a lot of work to do with the moving and stuff. I didn't get to see your sweet music recommendations yet.
You're welcome, Splock. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. What we call having it all. Treacherous blessing is just like so perfect for them. Just yeah, maybe we could get some more castles in here too. I've got time. I cannot cast any instant speed spells because to fairy time raveler. So I cannot cast negate. It's all these scries are just always at the top. They're always like, yeah, these are just exactly the spells that I want. Thank you. So yeah, basically, Thief of Sanity, like, for the cards that they're playing in, like, these control decks... That's where we want the Thief of Sanity slot, but it's just not good enough. That game, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, like, even if we had Ashiok, they would have, um, you know, they had those, they had double E to Extinction. And even, you know, like, Doom Foretold is really difficult to beat. Um, so I think we want, but I, I think we want to change that. I think we want Ashiok Dream Render. Because then you can also target yourself with the mill with Ashiok if need be. But I think that's just kind of better against, like, these blue-white decks. Like, because a lot of these blue-white decks are even playing... Like, even, like, the blue eye control is playing, like, Elspeth Conquers Death. They don't have a whole lot of win cons. Maybe you can kind of mill them out a little bit. And also, um, probably just want Remorse instead of Negate. Um, and I probably want a third Remorse. Because I don't, you know, like, Teferi should just shuts down the gate, and I don't want to try to try to hold up counter magic for Teferi with this kind of deck. I think this deck, you just want to be tapping out, playing your spells. We probably don't need that that third ritual set, honestly. So let's take that out. And that gives us a little bit more. So I do like Legion's Ends. So yeah, I think, I think that should help out our control matchups a lot, playing three Remorse, not Negates. Because you, you want to play, you know, like Remorse plus your other thing in, in one turn. Um, and then, yes, let's get... Let's just get a second of each of these castles. You know, like six basics and two castles is perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, let's get a second of each of the castles in here. So there we go. There, there's definitely some upgrades. Um, yeah. There should be some sideboard upgrades for our deck. But, you know, we, we held our own. Um, Team of Reclamation, I think, is a really tough matchup. But maybe, like, the Ashiox and Agonizing Remorses, maybe that would help that out. I don't know. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, the control our control matchup was not good, but it can be better, and I think that those cards will help that matchup be better. All right, so that's that's it here for Demir Reanimator. Uh, those y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and uh, you know leave those comments if you're trying the deck out yourself. Let me know how it's going. Um, but that's it here for Demir Reanimator. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.